It's always a weird thing when mentioning DC's treatment of Wonder Woman, as on one hand, she's been pushed to an extent in a plethora of media, being one of the major pillars of the DC Extended Universe, in which her first theatrical solo film made over $820 million worldwide and was praised by fans and critics alike. Not too shabby. But then they released Wonder Woman 1984 and that movie was straight booty cheeks. I don't know what the hell they were cooking with that. Every day I'm thankful Patty Jenkins never got to make a Wonder Woman 3, and it's a good thing they're going in a new direction for the DCU, but the DCEU itself didn't need to exist exist in order for Wonder Woman to be one of the most recognizable characters or be a household name like some of the Avengers cast. Despite being the most iconic female superhero of all time and making a huge stance in the genre, there are a decent amount of people who surprisingly don't give the character as much credit as she deserves. Shockingly enough, it seems as if DC doesn't do much with her outside of the recent live action films. This year alone, the world's finest are getting entries in the animation department, with Batman Caped Crusader releasing in August on Prime Video, having a more 1940s and inspired aesthetic. Then there's the second season of My Adventures with Superman, introducing Supergirl into the mix and seeing more of the dynamic between Jimmy, Lois, and Clark. So like, uh, wh wh where's that Wonder Woman animated series at? The character has been around since 1941 and has been a main character in both Justice League and Justice League Unlimited. And to this day, Wonder Woman somehow still doesn't have an animated show. Dog, freaking Kite Man is getting an animated TV show before Wonder Woman, which is a spinoff of the Harley Quinn animated series on Max. All I know is when I was a kid, I'd sit in my room and I'd dream about being a supervillain. My mom would not. You fucking... <laughs> This is just one example of the lack of Wonder Woman mythos being pushed in comparison to Batman and Superman. James Gunn did state that he's been trying to get a Wonder Woman animated show up and running ever since he was on board to be the co-CEO of DC Studios, so here's hoping that leads to something at some point. Everybody has their favorite interpretation of Batman and Superman. Oh, the DCAU is the best. Oh no, uh, the Arkham series is actually my favorite. Christopher Reeve's Superman really resonated with me, or you'll hear, oh no, nah, Henry Cavill was my personal favorite. Sure, Wonder Woman has had several adaptations, but the discussions surrounding said adaptations pale in comparison. I feel as if she needs a more diverse pool of depictions across mediums to explore different aspects of her mythos in gaming, animation, and live action. Because even though she's very well known and iconic, the same can't really be said for her rogues gallery or supporting cast. The most out of pocket takes I've heard on Wonder Woman come from the people who severely downplay her significance in the comic book genre. I've seen debates on who's the fourth most iconic superhero of all time after Superman, Batman, and Spider-Man. Some people say Hulk, Wolverine, maybe the flash now I like the guy but some of y'all really think the fourth most iconic superhero is Iron Man more iconic than Wonder Woman <laughs> Iron Man is a great character. I'm not discrediting his impact on the comic book genre. Absolutely insane to think Iron Man's popularity was anywhere near that of DC's Trinity before the Marvel Cinematic Universe was even a thing. The big three of Marvel without a doubt pre-MCU was Spider-Man, Hulk, and Wolverine. Anytime I would see a post like this on Twitter or some other social media platform, I'd see comments revolted on the idea of Wonder Woman being considered the fourth most iconic hero. Uh, W except for Wonder Woman should have put Captain America instead. Yes, sir. Thought about killing myself. Iron Man and Cap are not as iconic as Marvel's OG Big Three, and Iron Man is certainly not more iconic than Diana of Themyscira. I think it's tripping. <laughs> There was literally a short period of time where the fictional character of Wonder Woman in real life was appointed an honorary ambassador of the empowerment of women and girls for the United Nations. But then a couple months later, the UN dropped her as an ambassador after some criticism and controversy surrounding that decision. A bunch of goddamn cowards is what they are. Them niggas at the UN a bunch of frauds, I'd say. Powder. I made a mistake. I find it funny that the women who complained about Wonder Woman being an ambassador claimed she has big breasts bursting out of a skimpy outfit and an impossibly tiny waist. <laughs> <laughs> okay, saying how it's sending the wrong message to girls about meeting a male standard as a sexual object. So these people claim that they fight for gender equality, but then immediately judge one woman's character based off her appearance and not by reading her stories or looking who she is as a character, while also saying her body shape isn't appropriate to represent female empowerment. It's ironic. The lack of understanding of Wonder Woman's iconic nature is exactly why I hate the DCEU. The irrefutable damage that universe has done to the DC brand and its characters is tragic. You've got folk out here thinking Superman's boring, Batman's a brutal psycho anti-hero with no moral code, or Wonder Woman not being interesting enough to have compelling stories. I mean, the first Wonder Woman movie was solid, but like, that's it. It was all downhill from there. From that horrendous joke Joss Whedon put in the 2017 Justice League film.
lot of the out of place cameos you'd see in films like Shazam for your other gods. I swear if I hear that Wonder Woman theme one more time in a movie I'm gonna start tweaking. You'd see some casual complaints here and there on the more outlandish or silly elements of Wonder Woman's mythos. Some argue that her invisible jet is stupid but like dude it's an invisible jet how is that not cool? It's a good demonstration of some of the unique traits of the Wonder Woman lore that often don't get explored in media. Being molded from clay by her mother and brought to life by the gods for me is the preferred origin for Wonder Woman over her being the biological daughter of Zeus. That's far more unique and specific to her character than being like the 50 millionth child of Zeus because if I'm being honest that's a little boring. Greetings, I'm Wonder Woman, but you can call me by my real name, Diana. I was born on Themyscira, the secret island home of the Amazons. As a child, I grew up believing I would remain on Themyscira with my Amazonian sisters. That is, until I learned a big secret. Would you like to hear it? I learned that I was the daughter of Zeus, ruler of the gods. Oh my god, who the hell Cash. And I feel this fear of being too outlandish or unrealistic took a turn for the worse temporarily when the New 52 came about. Pre-New 52, the Amazons were created by a few goddesses where the souls of women who were killed by men would be reincarnated into the Amazons of Themyscira to form a society of warrior women. I think more adaptations should lean in more on the Greek mythology side of things as that creates interesting stories to tell with the vast roster of one woman side characters and villains. But the New 52 came along and they were like, oh, 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 oh. Fuck all that! Nah, I don't fuck all that. There came the infamous retcon on the creation of the Amazons where instead they would reproduce by going on ships, force themselves onto the sailor men who were on said ships, then kill them all once they were done with them and would just throw them off into the water. I know a couple of characters off the top of my head who would make for great Amazons in the New 52. To make matters even worse, if a baby turned out to be a boy instead of a girl, that baby would be forced into slavery while the girl would get to live on Paradise Island. You guys make me sick to my stomachs fam. But I'm pretty sure this all got retconned in DC Rebirth, so thank God for that because nobody was having that nonsense. On the same topic of the New 52, this also birthed the temporarily short relationship between Wonder Woman and Superman. Now I'm not here to bash on you if you so happen to like this pairing. All I'm saying is that if Superman is an active hero when it comes to the girl he's with, if the girl's name is not Lois Lane, I don't want to hear it. Also the members of the Trinity work better together as friends to begin with. You're sure it's a good idea? It feels right. Can't let it rest, can you? Knock it off, you two. You still owe me a computer. Might take a while. Reporter's salary. Always has to have the last word. Mm. What'd you get him? He'll hear and spoil the surprise. He's not the easiest person in the world to buy birthday presents for. Bruce, you didn't get him a gift certificate. No. Cash. Some of these changes to the Wonder Woman mythos and especially the origin of the Amazons have been weird, but would you believe me if I said Zack Snyder wanted the Amazons in the DCEU to be Kryptonians? What? There were some ideas being tossed around on the possibility of some of the Greek gods like Zeus being Kryptonian, tying Wonder Woman's heritage with that of Krypton. Possibly a Kryptonian yes. and that, yeah. and that, so that Wonder Woman's powers Anyway, you could sort of see where that's going, you know, because, you know, the whole thing of like whether or not magic and the gods, you know, there's a version where like, OK, that's cool, I guess. But like, you know, there's also the more sort of scientific kind of, you know, you have like a mythology built up of like, why, where do gods come from? Like, what is that about? You know, and so anyway, it was we had played around with that quite a bit. <laughs> That's actually hilarious. Uh, oh, oh, Zachary. I think we all know why this is just a god-awful concept. I mean, my lord, connecting Themyscira with Kryptonian heritage is completely nonsensical because one, why would their abilities work differently than that of Superman if they've been exposed to Earth's yellow sun this whole time? And two, it makes the universe feel that much smaller and gets rid of any of the uniqueness of Wonder Woman's mythology and backstory, which makes her stand out in comparison to other DC characters. On top of that, you're removing a lot of the fantasy elements of the DC universe. Oh, look, guys. He's just like Superman, isn't that great? Ah, sick! Even though this never became a reality, the fact that this was even discussed or talked about makes me glad most of the cooks in the DCEU kitchen no longer have access to the utensils because they were about to manifest some dog dookie, more so than they already have anyway. But Snyder's BS doesn't end there unfortunately, as he yet again revealed as to why he was the wrong person to helm the DCIP. Again? Again. 
So apparently he had this idea tossed around about a scrapped Wonder Woman 1854 film where it would focus on her experiences in various wars throughout the years, finding lovers on the battlefield, but since she's immortal, the men would age out or die in battle. They'd date her for about a decade or so, but then they'd feel sad because they would see Diana being nice to the next young soldier and come to the conclusion and realization that, oh, I'm being replaced. Snyder also shared a photo on Twitter with Wonder Woman holding three severed heads. So basically this scrapped film would have been the utter and complete character assassination of Wonder Woman and going against everything she stands for. My man's is on straight weird shit. Back the fuck Again, these were all scrapped ideas, but these concepts even being in the topic of discussion is lunacy. Oh damn, it seems like they won't be continuing with Gal Gadot's iteration of the character in the new DCU. Oh no, they won't be continuing with that actress whatsoever. Good. What? A complete reboot in live action is exactly what this character needs, alongside an initiative to push the character more into the mainstream. A new single player AAA video game is certainly a step in the right direction, which is surprising how this would be the first Wonder Woman game, well, ever to my knowledge. The new DCU has a lot of opportunities to delve deeper into Wonder Woman's lore, her supporting cast of characters like Donna Troy or Cassie Sandsmark. We'll be getting our first look into this new iteration of the Amazons in the prequel series Paradise Lost, set before Diana's birth, so basically like the Krypton show but for Wonder Woman. I just need some of the same love given to Batman and even a bit of Superman as of late with a new Superman cartoon and with a new movie on the horizon. Hand it to Wonder Woman as well because people debating her popularity and impact on the comic book genre and questioning if she's even iconic is blasphemy. Seeing the wonders that was done for the character of Iron Man because of the MCU who wasn't even that well known pre-2008, imagine what a proper interconnected universe could do for a character that's already one of the most recognizable superheroes of all time.